right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Alley Chat. My name is Frank Face. I am here uh, within the friendly confines of the Malden Square Bolodrome with my good friend and co-host Kyle Bruce. And Kyle, we have an unbelievably special guest today. Uh, probably our most special to date. I would, I, think. I would think so. Yes. I mean, we just had some great interviews at the Worlds, but today we have Mr. Ralph Stewart, the love line and footfall judge of the Channel Five Canlipin Bowling Show. Ralph, thank you very much for joining us. We're very happy to have you. My pleasure. And uh, we're going to talk today about about uh, how your involvement in the in the TV show and and just bowling in general. So. Right. Um, what can you say about the show, how important it was to Kilpin Bowling over the years? Oh, exceptionally. It was 37 and a half years. Uh, we thought it would go on forever. I think everyone thought it was going to go on forever yeah. because that was really New England, I yeah, think. Exactly. You know, you wake up in the yeah. morning and, you know, uh, noontime. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then they moved it back to 11. I think, uh, I don't know if it was football. I think they may have decided to do the news at noon. I don't know, <laughs> what have you. But... That was New England. At least that's the way I thought it was, Frank. I, I agree. I used to wake up every Saturday morning, and my dad and I would watch. Uh, notably, Tom Olsta was was the guy. He was. I'm sure you was. remember him very well. Yep. Um, who was actually recently inducted to the to the Kilpin Bowling Hall of Fame, Ralph? I think I saw your name on that list. Is that correct? I haven't been notified. You, you haven't been no- okay. So no, maybe we got to do something about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, as we've discussed on previous episodes. Kyle and I, as Alley Chad, are now part of the ICBA, and uh, we are also on the Hall of Fame committee. So, All right. um, Kyle, I think we have another name for yes, our list. That's true. The, the <laughs> list keeps growing and growing. Wow. So, that's awesome. Uh, Ralph, can you tell us a little bit how you became involved with the, the show, or just in bow- bowling in general? Sure. I, uh, I almost... Uh, uh, Got on the show the very first taping. Oh, okay. Up oh, wow. on Boylston Street. Uh, I Jim was, Britt. Yes. Yep. Jim Britt was the, uh, and they thought they should get somebody to back up Jim Britt, and mm-hmm. they brought Don Gillis in. Mm-hmm. And, and then and Jim Britt did the kids' show afterwards, right? No. The winning winning pins? I thought that was a couple no, years after that. Uh, Jim Britt wasn't involved in that. Uh, uh, Anyway, uh, yeah, Don, Don Gillis was uh, all right along, and Bill, uh, uh, Bill O'Connell, Bill O'Connell, right, and uh, yeah, Bill O'Connell and Ed Harding were backups on the show, also. right? Brian Leary too. Brian Leary, right. yeah, yes, right. yep. yep, yeah, because they did the first um, in '83 when they went to uh, um, instead of having a, a one-on-one for the the championship when they went to five. Uh, in a, that stepladder format, I know that uh, Brian Leary was the um, analyst mm-hmm. um, up until they brought in um, Ed Harding, yeah. and Brian Leary did the uh, the news yeah. at that point. So, yeah. so you almost made the first taping. Well, I was down there. Like I say, I was a groupie. I was following them, and uh, right. the fellow that was more or less in charge by the name of Lou Pagnani. I worked on the shipyard, by the way. And I worked midnight to eight in the morning. So uh, uh, the fellow that was more or less running the show, Lou Pagnani, grabbed me one day. I knew him well from the shipyard. And he said, Ralph, you're going to be on the line. And I says, well, what's going on? And, and he explained that the fellow didn't show up. And just before the taping started, uh, Lou Pagnani showed up. Okay. And Lou Pagnani had the show for the first 17 years. And then Phil Rubin took it over after that to the to ninety six. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When it yeah. ended. Mm-hmm. Now, where were you bowling? What houses were you bowling out of back then? Well, we started in uh, in uh, uh, Sammy White's. Well, I know over, uh, over in Brighton. Yeah. I meant you personally. Myself, where I was bowling. Yeah. Uh, up to Boylston Street. Okay. Yeah. I bowled uh, probably seven nights a week, someplace. Wow. Oh, wow. Until I went to work in a bowling alley, and I ended up bowling one night a week and <laughs> only that because uh, we were bowling in a couples league and we ran the league so we had to bowl in it my wife and i right okay as a matter of fact kaya stromsky's mother and father bowled with us in our couples league in watertown oh no kidding yeah for, for several years and mm. uh she passed on and he dropped out for a couple of years and then he came back and uh stayed with us until it folded up wow carl senior yeah Oh, mm-hmm. I did, pretty, not, did not know that. Pretty neat. Yeah. 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 Ralph, do you still bowl? 
I haven't thrown a ball in uh, probably 20 years. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. I, I was fair. I had a, a 189 high. I threw five in a row one time down a lucky strike in Dorchester. Wow, oh, that's wow. impressive. And and they uh, jumped me because I was on the wrong lane on one of the frames, and they told me it didn't count. And I cut out the rule book, and I said, oh, yes, it does count. You go finish your lane, you finish your box, and go to the proper lane. But, sure. Uh, they let me get by with it. Wow. <laughs> well, that's pretty good stuff. Yeah. that's. Uh, well, <laughs> I've never thrown I've thrown four in a row, but not... Yeah. Never well, five. Yeah. That's that's very Never good. Never again, though. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at that point in time, were they using still the wood pins? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay, so I they had to use so. over the plastic. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so then years, uh, you said you worked on the show for 20 years? Yes. So at that point, you're at Sammy White's. Mm-hmm. And how did that situation develop with them coming to you? That. Was that? Um, I was doing a kid show on Channel Seven with Dana Hersey. The movie um, loft. Yep, yep, from the movie loft, and uh, we were doing that on uh, Saturdays. And one week we would do junior boys and junior girls. They'd bowl two strings apiece. And the uh, next week we would do senior boys and senior girls, two strings apiece. And if they won seven weeks in a row, they would get a bicycle. A bicycle. A yes. bicycle. We <laughs> weren't allowed to give cash. Well, so of course. They, uh, they said a bicycle read. Because they're all little kids. Well, that's but a pretty were, noteworthy prize, right. I think. I, I think the adults should have gotten the opportunity <laughs> to win a bicycle <laughs> as well. Exactly. <laughs> so now you're working here at Malden Bowlerdrome. This is where I grew up bowling. Um, how long have you been here? I've been here about 15 years. I've been with this company, Ryan Amusement, for right. about 45 years. Okay. So, oh, wow. so you must have been working at one of the other establishments Yes. Prior to this. Watertown. Okay. Two, two different houses in Watertown. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenmore Lanes, which was uh, changed over to Ryan Amusement. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. And we were down there for about 10 years. Oh. So uh, now we're here. It seems like a, yeah, an enti- entire lifetime. Mm-hmm. So um, let's talk a little bit. I think we should talk more about Channel 5. The, the, oh, the, absolutely. The show. I mean, yes. we have a wealth of yep. knowledge yep. here. Um how important do you think the lob line is? Um, nowadays, I got to tell you, a lot of the bowlers don't do not observe it, and they feel as though the rule itself is outdated. They don't think it applies anymore because of synthetic lanes and so forth being yeah. being more durable to the slamming of the bowling ball. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you feel that it results in higher scoring if you lob? No, you no. don't think so. No, the ball has to be nice and smooth. And rolling, it goes down with the pins. When it hits the pins, it has to be rolling, not on the fly. Right, mm-hmm. of course. You get a lot more action. Mm-hmm. Did you ever catch anyone uh, foot fouling? Maybe twice. Mm. Maybe twice, yeah. I can't remember that too much. No, and I think I've it's only called like three lobs in 20 years. Mm. I remember a couple uh, diff- uh, on in the live show, and that's going to be a hard call. To make, yeah, especially when you know you're going from the bottom of the ladder and trying to go up, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of attention. I mean, I remember at Sammy White's, um, well, even at the fairway, and then later at Pilgrim, Full mm-hmm. House, yeah. And I remember yeah, always it, right, and I remember it being in the paper, and that was a real story around here. I mean, every bowler, Paul Berger said the best thing ever, complimenting the show after he won in '92, saying this is what every bowler looks forward to at the end of the year, the last Saturday in August, to be on the live show. Yeah, so right. it's got to put a lot of pressure hmm. on well, you yeah. to make sure you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make- But I had a little bit of a system. I would sit there and and uh, I would watch their foot and then immediately turn my head to the lob line. Sure. And then I would go down and I would have to count the pins. In case there was a foul or a lob, mm-hmm. I would have to know how many pins to tell Don Gillis to, to deduct and from the score. What the what the frame actually was. So I just back and forth, back and forth. I imagine it's a pretty diligent task. I mean, you have to be pretty sharp to do that, or at least always paying attention. Paying all, attention, always that focused. was the main yeah. thing. Yeah. And, you know, uh, getting back to when the show first started, the law blind didn't sit on the law blind. He sat in the bench with the bowlers. Really? Yes. Wow. For, for maybe two or three shows until there were a couple of calls. Hmm. And they thought, well, maybe somebody should be sitting right out there on the line. Interesting. So speaking of which, 
How many lanes over from the actual bowlers were you? There was one lane my, between myself. And Only me. one lane. Oh yeah. wow! One one empty lane. I would sit on the. Yeah. Because hmm. I mean, at the fairway, it, the, when they did that wide shot, when Don would say, "Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee," and they showed that shot, mm-hmm. and you know the way the fairway was, it made it look like sometimes you were you know a mile away. Uh-huh. There's, there's <laughs> one empty lane in between us. Yeah. So lane five, I think it was maybe because uh-huh. I think it was two and three. That was it. Two and three or three and four. It doesn't matter. Uh-huh. Yeah. At least when they went when they went to the fairway, anyhow. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, that's some good stuff. When when did that when did that a boy Ralph start? Do you remember that? It was the crowd, the crowd sitting in the back when I went down and pick out a pin or get a ball out of the gutter. Yeah, and it just carried on from there. As a matter of fact, if I was on vacation and Don Riley sat in the chair for me to take my place, sure, he still got an Atta boy Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Yeah. The tradition started and it continued. Yeah. Oh, that was a rite of passage. I think. Uh, I mean, it even. Anyone, well, almost anyone that's you know clearing a piece of wood today. I mean, you hear yeah. it occasionally, and it's it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder yeah. if you even are aware, Ralph, how kind of iconic you are. Like everybody, you know, the Friday Pro League when we bowl that, when we bowl up the Worlds in Canada, or any other uh, pro tournaments. If anyone's chasing the pin, they're always saying something about Ralph's doing. Really? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Oh my god, everywhere too. <laughs> Yeah, it's not just local. It's it's like I said, it all the way up in Canada. I mean, really, I'm flattered. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, well, that speaks to the scope of the show, though, and yes. how many people yes. you guys reached. Yeah. And I think people appreciate how hard it was. Maybe we don't. I don't know. Maybe some of us don't. But to, just to get on Channel Five, just to win a roll off, right? To make TV, that was tough. Yeah. You had to win twice. Right. You had to win in your house, and then you had to go to a final. Right. Yep. And then at the final, there could be how many guys? Yeah, all the, be- peak. the best. Right. They were all the best. Right. Yeah. And in those days, the, the volume of bowlers was much larger. So yes. mm-hmm. you're speaking the best of the best. Yep. I think there were probably, I think, seven geographic areas. I can't remember. And I know that you know the, the show would alternate which right. when they would take a bowler out of Middlesex, when they'd take a, a bowler out of South Shore, exactly. the Cape or what yes. have you. Yep. So if you were so inclined, if you you know lived up here, but you could have gone down to oh, the yeah. Cape and you know yeah, you, you you didn't have to stay in your own house, right? You could have gone uh, gone around, yeah. But it's just it's amazing accomplishment. I think just to make it once, and when you know, Frank, to your point, talking about Olsta and how he made it over ninety times, right? Mm-hmm. It's just unbelievable. It's still staggering. What would you say is is Maybe the most memorable memorable event on on being at a Channel Five taping uh, that you remember seeing or watching, bowling or otherwise. Well, I would say Paul Burgess five hundred. Sure, that was that was so exciting, and I just prayed with every ball that he threw that it happened. Of course, he he never came close to lobbing, but you never know what the ball would stick. I had a fellow one day. The ball stuck to his hand and went up and actually hit the ceiling, <laughs> and it come down this side of the lob line. Was that John and Petorsky? I don't recall, but I remember the ball going up, and it come down and rolled slowly down the lane. It was good. It was legal. It, it was legal. It fell on this side of the lob line. <laughs> wow. But he actually went up and hit the ceiling, yeah. Well, the, 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 I guess that's a first. Yeah. I, well, I remember on, on, on the Big Shot Bowling Nesson show that Bob Foraker talked about John Petorsky, when he was in mid-approach, he saw that there were only nine pins in the plate, and by the time he recognized it, the ball had already left his hand and mm-hmm. went straight up into the ceiling. And I guess Helen Salou was not very happy with him because uh, he put a hole in her ceiling. But well, uh, I don't know. That's the only thing that comes to mind for me. Yeah, right? apparently these th- these types of things happen. Right. Yeah. But um, you know, the funny thing about that that five hundred is that. I don't remember uh, Paul Berger throwing a lot of strikes that day. He had the spare ball working. Yes. And, I mean, I, th- yeah. I know he threw a 193 third string, but uh, I think he, I know he had 10 marks in a row from going from. Dude, he had a 158, a 149, and a 198. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And that's the kind of year where I felt like there were years going into the live show that you know a certain whoever's at number one. They have, they're going to win. 
yeah. and that was Paul Berger yeah. in '92. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Ulster went against him in the final, and I think I think Berger went uh, s- strike nine drop, picked it up, and you know you think he threw like two ninety for two or something like that, mm. and it was just. I don't know, and then Ulster won the next year. Same kind of thing, you know. You just get on a roll, and well, yeah, no one had yeah. a bigger role than than Ulster, right? No, no. <laughs> Were you as? Sh- I mean, do you remember when uh, Fran Honorado beat Ulster to end the streak? I don't. Uh, I don't really. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> you were there. I wasn't. I- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom, Tommy Ulster's high three was a four eighty three. Right. Yeah, Ray McGurk, like yeah. we were talking about mm-hmm. before. Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. you know, what a shock yeah. Uh, yeah. going into that, that live show. And, you know, um, obviously I can't remember what Ray hit to. And I apologize, Ray, if you're listening uh, to this broadcast. But obviously he did well enough to make the live shows, four, 420 or 430-something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that was what a day. One of the big upsets, I guess, in the 20 years of doing the live show. Yeah. So, yeah. what kind of guy was Don Gillis like? Oh, excellent, excellent. It was uh, we had a little story when uh, we used to go to lunch in between shows. We'd do two shows, take a break for lunch, and we were going into a restaurant one day, and he and Phil Rubin and a couple of the cameramen went in through the door, and I stood back and held the door open for a couple of ladies. And this is after Don Gillis come off of the air doing the sports. Okay. And one of the ladies said to the other, didn't that used to be Don Gillis? <laughs> <laughs> well, how well put. <laughs> right, yeah. That sounds like something yeah. I would say. Right. Uh, yeah. that but I, I thought it was right. yeah. <laughs> What's, yeah. Ralph, what was, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Kyle and I, we we are doing a, 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 a TV show where the, the format is very similar to, to Channel 5. We do three strings of Kimmel and Bowling, mm-hmm. Scratch, yeah. uh, Under the Lights. And uh, Kyle, a, a, a taping day f- for the crew is pretty grueling. I mean, what would, I'm sure you'd agree. Oh, I. <laughs> what was a, a, a typical taping day like for the Channel Five show? Well, it, we always had a smooth uh, run. Uh, just go in, and and they would warm up over on the side, and I would talk to them beforehand mm-hmm. and uh, loosen them up a little bit, and we would do the show, and everything ran smoothly. Yeah, I don't think we ever had any uh, problems at all. I'd assume that most of your equipment was probably pre-set up and everything, oh, yes. yeah. so mm-hmm. that would make things a lot easier if we could do that. But we don't yeah. have that luxury. But uh, yeah, someday we're going to be professionals. Yes, yeah. yes, we will not be amateurs in <laughs> yeah. the birthday party room. Had <laughs> Malden <laughs> Bulldog. <Bullard> Wait, <laughs> <laughs> great. So, Ralph, would you ever kind of uh, – you you were saying that you would talk to the Bulls prior to the match. Mm-hmm. What would, you, would would it be kind of like a ground rules More or less, discussion yeah. or something? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd talk about, um, you know, foot fouling and, and logging right. and so exactly. forth. exactly. Just trying to calm them down and settle them in. And Did you find a lot of Bulls were nervous? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them, their first time, you know, it's a big thing for them. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Can you talk about the differences between Sammy White's and the fairway? Like just comparing and contrasting the houses? Well, uh, Sammy White's was a little larger. I mean, uh, it was a big house. And uh, fairway was more family oriented and uh, a little more closer. Sure. Uh, just a different atmosphere altogether. Yeah. Seems like they were both pretty fair in terms of the pin action. I mean, they seem to be both pretty honest houses, at least from yeah, you yeah, know they, the, they the were, footage. Yeah, that they used the same pins. For, they didn't put out new pins. They just had pins put aside for the show. Okay. So that, I, is they, the they proprietor the, would, like Helen would? For, yes. For, oh, no kidding. Yes, they had their own as pins that they would use just for the show and put mm-hmm. them out. And when taping was finished, they would remove they would them. put them away wow. and use them for the next show. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Over the run of the show... Can you talk about some of the changes during the course of the show in terms of, you know, from the 70s into the 80s and then into the 90s? Did you see a lot of changes at not all? Not really, no. No, everything, uh, no, not really. Because, I mean, I'm not sure in terms of the numbers of the bowlers that would go out to roll-offs and such, because I know back in the 70s, I mean, you'd have 200 at a Pro Tour event if you're 
uh, in the men's division, and I think the women had about 150. And I know over the years it seemed to kind of decline. So just wondering, um, in terms of – were you made aware of how many bowlers would be at a roll-off for a final? No, of the different really. areas? No, yeah. no, I wasn't on that end of it. No, it would just get the names. Uh, Joanne Panto was a statistician and a scorekeeper. And, uh, well, she didn't, she kept score for herself, but the, uh, the other score w- was done with the computer. Yeah. Right. And when did that come in? Because I remember. Th- I it s- wasn't always. Right. I always I, do that. Right. Yeah. I remember seeing the handwritten scores. Yeah. For, yeah, it was for like 86, yeah. I want to say. Right. Something yeah. like that. Probably. Yeah. Because yeah, I remember that blue board. Of course. Well, that uh-huh. we've, we've you know, recreated. that Scott Moore uh, replicated in a digital form for right. the. Right. Right classic handleman yeah. show so was that co- uh computer scoring was that visible only to viewers at home or was that visible to the the spectators at spectators could uh, see it too. Oh, okay sure. okay yeah they had monitors around where the spectators could see very good yeah and people could i believe people in the gallery could hear what don was saying Is oh that- absolutely sure. right yeah yeah, yeah. They would get there 7 o'clock in the morning before the place was even open <laughs> just to get a seat up front. No, I believe we, it. We had the same people sitting up there all the time. Oh, yeah. Right, right. And I believe it was it Tuesdays that they filmed or? or Mondays. Mondays, okay. Mondays. And so so that goes to show, I mean, people were probably even taking days off of work. Yes. To, oh, yeah. Just, uh-huh. just to come watch. Yeah, sure. the three-day weekend. Yeah. Especially <laughs> if you had a buddy of yours that was bowling that oh, day. Yes. You yeah. know, you'd go down yeah. to... You know, they, would have, have you. they would have signs and things in the back, yeah. Hmm. And it, it got to be pretty loud sometimes, depending sure. on you know yep. who was bowling. So yep. they were right into it. Everybody, oh, yeah. yeah. I think that probably made it even better for the bowler. Oh yes, absolutely. You know? and, yeah. um, made it better for the spe- to watch it at home. I think because oh, you really get invested in the match and right. the outcome of it. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, yep, yep, yeah. Bowling is really kind of one of the only sports where you. Well, I, I, get, I suppose you can get loud in all sports, but bowling is it's just a different feel. Um, oh, I would agree. Especially, you know, at the Worlds, you know, just coming back from that. Yeah. I mean, um, there's a, a different kind of intensity, and I think on Channel 5 you certainly felt that depending on, on the match. Like certainly for the, the, the live show, Yes. I mean, it, it didn't get any louder, right. I think. Right. Because, well, exactly. because there's, you know, 20000 bucks on the line. You right. Know, you're right. going to. And you ball all year just to get to that point. Sure. So. And you had stadium seating, full house, and it's just right. Well, at least towards the end, anyway. Right. That was a, I think that was a neat move going to Pilgrim because with that that the bleachers in the back. Yes. You know. I mean, yeah, that was a good place. Right. Good place to watch it. You yeah. have over a thousand people in there, and mm-hmm. of course, if it's in late August, it's probably three thousand degrees. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess it speaks to the conditioning of the bowlers just to make it through. Sure. Sure. Can you talk about when you got the news that the show was going off the air? Like, how oh, did they break that down to you? It was sad. It was sad. We couldn't believe it. We thought, you know, we thought it would go on forever. As and many yeah, as many people sure, did. Sure. Right. It was a shock. One of the things that I heard or I read at some point that Channel 5 was looking to put the money that was going into the show into their news division, and that's why... They made that decision. From what I understood, Channel 5 uh, uh, wasn't putting an awful lot of money into the prize money. MBA was covering that. No kidding. That's what I was told. What about sponsor money? Because I remember the... They had, we had no sponsors, if you remember. Well, I remember Rotman's because the, the, yeah. the, it would recline two inches from the wall. I remember that yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have many sponsors at all. And the the uh, NBA was carrying that. The Parker Pen Company. Oh, yes. Of course. Right. Uh, the handsome gift yes, from the <laughs> Parker Pen Company. <laughs> you know. I, I mean, that's that's pretty interesting. It, same thing with the Home Viewer Jackpot. That was that was NBA as well. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And the Hilo Jack, because I remember, I think it was Sharon Rawson that hit it that when it went up to 3400 bucks or something like that. It was like... I can't remember if it was another fifty dollars every week or what have you, but I mean that. I think it kept growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. Wow, just to make that. I remember the big hug that she got uh, from (laughs) Dawn when uh, she made that shot. So uh, that's funny. I mean, it's. Is it fair to say that the game hasn't 
recovered from Channel 5 going off the air, in your opinion? No. No. That really speaks to the power of the pro- of the show itself. Well, of course. I mean, people who didn't bowl but just appreciated the sport are no longer really connected to it on a weekly basis like they were before. Right. Because even that's, – that, that's a good point, Frank, because – how many people say, "Well, I watched the show with my grandmother, or what have you," because right. it was the grandmother's, you know, part of the Sunday morning ritual, or what have you. And you know, like you said, Ralph, it was twenty years, you know, nineteen ninety six when the show right. went off the exactly. air. So one know. of his favorite sayings was, "More ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hold on to your tray tables." Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. I remember that one. Yeah, and he yeah. had a. This, uh, a specific way of calling each shot, calling each leave, because... He did. Yeah. He did. The bucket, he would call, and the right. bucket wins again yep. if he didn't make it. Sure. Yep. And the high-low jack, the same thing. Yeah. Right. And he was very conscious of the of viewers that uh, had poor vision. So he would yes, describe, exactly. the, describe that exactly. wood and where he it would. was. He can visualize it in your head. He would do that. Right. Every, every shot. Yeah. And to think that... He did that. I mean, Kyle, every show that we've seen since or in conjunction with Channel 5 has had more than one guy at the desk, if I'm not mistaken, in the booth. Yeah. And Don Gillis did this all by himself. He really kind of painted a very clear picture for the viewer. Mm-hmm. He um, did. You know, just probably the best of all time. Oh, definitely. I mean, not only that, but really going into the bowler themselves i think you know part of the his genius is to or was to give the viewer a reason to want to root for whoever's bowling you know because that i feel like that's part of his delivery was going into making that match compelling and you know have you watched the the full match the three strings right you know because king of the hill they lose they're going home they're not coming back that's right unless they they did well enough it brings up a point, you know. The only way they could come back is if they threw a high enough score to make it to the live show. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, because I think, I want to say Brian, I can't remember if Brian McKinley won his match to make it to the 93 live show. And I feel bad, Brian, if you're listening, that I don't remember. But uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, hey, he won five grand, so he, yeah. you know, <laughs> and he went against Olsta for ten grand. So, uh, you know, it, it can't be too bad, but... Um, I think that's the great drama about it. You, you know, you, you make it all the way. You win one roll off. You go on TV, and if you don't make it, try again next year. Right. That's right. Yeah. It's a tough pill to swallow. Oh, but it was always there. Right. You know. So, Ralph, I'm sure that uh, you know <laughs> you you may have been expecting this topic of discussion. We've got to talk about. Uh, there, there are very few people I've told that we're doing this interview. Uh, I've told very few people about it because I wanted it to be a surprise for our viewers. All right. Um, but each and every person I've told has said, Frank, you've got to talk to him about the shoes and socks. <laughs> you've, you've absolutely got to do it. So um, just tell us a little bit about it. I mean, I know it became kind of a gimmick, um, but it seemed like without, without fail every show, Oh yeah, Don Gillis would would poke fun at you for for. Well, he, he started it okay. with just a regular <laughs> pair of socks, and as he went on week after week, my socks would get louder and louder. Okay. So I was aware of it, so I was going along with it. Sure, sure. And the sweaters the same way. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the so. Cosby sweaters that you wore. <laughs> and at the uh, after the show was all done, the Channel Five put on a pretty good uh, show for us. And gave me a nice plaque and everything, and asked everybody to have a something to say. And I got up and asked anybody want to buy some socks. <laughs> it went over pretty good. <laughs> wow! How often can you be in a social function where that's uh, a, a topic that comes up? A, a very desirable piece of memorabilia. <laughs> I know it. Ralph Stewart socks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Should be part of the shrine in the Alley Chat Studio. I think we may make that part of our apparel line. <laughs> right. So. Yes. Provided we have Ralph's permission. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. We can, as long as we can use your likeness on the socks sure. themselves, you know. Right. We'll right. have to design something. For yes. It. Some arg- black and white arg- argyles with uh, yeah. some candle pins mixed in there somehow. Yeah, there you go. But That's well executed. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I'm completely overwhelmed. I feel, you know, seeing you brings back so many memories for me because as a kid, um, I was never oh, I was never a very good bowler, and it's not the Kyle Bruce show, but I mean, <laughs> it, it, Channel 5 was the one thing that I look forward to every Saturday. Yeah, for everyone. Everyone, no matter where. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I just thank you for being with us. Well, Incredible. thank you for having me. Oh, of goodness. course, of course. I, Ralph, did you did you keep up with the other TV shows after Channel Five had stopped? No, no, no not no, quite. No, and uh, I kind of took a rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you deserved it after being there for all those matches. Yeah. But w- was that something that was ever discussed? Like, it was Phil Rubin like keeping one eye on, you know, maybe Channel Fifty or you know the Channel Twenty Seven or the Nesson Show? Was that ever ever no. enter into? No. Not as I recall, no. Was there ever talk about changing the format at some no. point or another? No. To do like a stepladder or anything like that? It was no. always, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's interesting. Hmm. Do you still keep in, in contact with Phil Rubin? We used to exchange cards at the holiday. Okay. And just uh, one year, one of us, I don't know which one stopped. Sure. I don't know if he's still around. But he did retire from the station a okay. long time ago because he was doing the uh, 7.30 show. Oh, Chronicle? Channel, Chronicle. He yeah. was doing that for years and uh, directing it. Right. And uh, he, had, he doesn't hasn't done it for a long, long time. So I don't know if he's still around even. He was at the Hall of Fame banquet. Yeah, he was. was he? Yeah, uh-huh. the, uh, that was uh, not this past October, but 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, did you get a chance to talk to him, Kyle? I didn't, and I regret that. Yeah. We're going to have to change that, Frank, I think. <laughs> to see if he wants so, to put another show on. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm I, all for we're that. We're part of the TV committee, right? I mean, we, we are. Yeah. We are part of the ICBA TV committee, so uh, perhaps we could put something to, together. They but. know they'll have an audience the minute it goes on the air. Well, uh, Every I'm, Saturday at noon. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, You know, it's unfortunate. Well, that would be pretty sweet. That'd be a nice conversation to have, I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I guess Ralph has thrown the gauntlet down. Yes, you know, Ralph Stewart would like to now be a spectator. Spectator. No, I, so. I, I could do. I could still do it. That'd be great. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, we could always uh, have him for the classic Candlepins Tournament of Champions. W- would you like to do that for us, Ralph? Sure, uh, absolutely. So, what we do in August is uh, so we have a, a step ladder format, like Kyle was saying. Mm-hmm. We do five tournaments throughout the year, and all the five winners of that tournament bowl in the Tournament of Champions. Mm-hmm. And for that, we could use you as a lob line judge. Yes. Really? Should, should you be willing to do so? Well, if I'm still around, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm 88 years old. <laughs> well, congratulations to you. That's that's a, a great age to, to be at, and yeah. you're still working and, and everything. So. Yeah. And you've seen so much bowling, too. Oh, a lot of <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous. I mean, there's yeah. so much that can yeah. be learned you know, oh, so over the years. So I look forward to each week, every week. Yeah. It was, oh, so exciting. Even still. Yes. Yeah. Great. Because yeah. you're here Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, I've been coming here for years and just never decided to talk to you about it, but now we're glad that we're doing this. Oh, good. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've talked about it before on other shows. Mm-hmm. Um, the guys our age have a deep respect for not only the yourself, but the Channel 5 program. Mm-hmm. So just to be able to talk to you about it, because I never went to a 5 taping, and it's one of my larger regrets in life, because yeah. I never experienced that, um, especially the live show. I mean, you know, the, to, to me as a kid, that was the Super Bowl. It was. It was. It was great. And just to have that talent to be able to compete on that level oh, of course unbelievable mm-hmm. or just to be able to be a part of that production crew to put that all together because d- doing the classic canopin show that gives us kind of a glimpse into what it, it takes to run that you know a quality program it's not easy and then to take it you know to the highest you know echelon which i think everybody looks at channel five as the gold standard. I don't think that's oh, without a controversial a, yeah, without take question. at all. So, Ralph, how large of a crew was there for the show, for the taping day? I mean, there were three cameras, okay, a scorekeeper, and a, a stage hand director. And what did that person do? 
Well, he gave the signals of when you were on the air and okay. when to stop and who was speaking next. And I see. When to ask for applause. Well, uh, that was automatic. Yeah, I, I think... <laughs> well, I meant like... No, I meant like um, when Don would do his intro and then I think years after he'd have the bowlers come up mm-hmm. and then after he would say, we'll get underway right after this, then generally there was applause. Yes. So yeah. I think yeah. that's the only time it would be asked for. Because I remember coming out of a break, it was generally silence. Yes. So... Yeah. Um, we need we need a stage director. I we I would love to have a stage director. Yes, <laughs> we we need a well, lot. Of them. <laughs> but I think we're doing great with what we have on hand. Yes, but, um, that's true. Well, Ralph, we want to thank you very much for for joining well, I us. Hope I added chat. something. I hope it's what you expected. I, it's more than what we expected. Honestly, this has been great. I think this is the type of thing that needs to be documented. You're the type of people that we need to talk to. Uh, to kind of maybe get bowling to camp and bowling back to where it should be, I know that that's a cliche thing to say, but but and we all say it, but no, uh, it's not cliche because you know it, we when when we say it's the greatest in the world, uh, you know it's not tongue in cheek. I really feel like camp and bowling is the best sport around. It was, it was, you yes. know, yeah, and it's it's so difficult to excel in this game. Uh, that's why you know there's a degree of admiration on, on my part and other people that you know, respect people like yourself that were that was part of the show and you know some you know the, the bowlers that we've talked to on on Alley Chat sure. that were featured on Classic Candlepins. That's what it's all about. You know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Respect. Right. So well Ralph, thanks again very much. Thank you. We appreciate you having us. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. you know, well, Thank you, Ralph. Thank and you. we hope our viewers and listeners are have enjoyed this and look forward to having more good content like this on Alley Chat.